we are probably already extinct. <laughs> Yikes, the word on this street is ominous. <laughs> so let me explain. I really only want to make a point about statistics. If you were to select at random any species that's ever lived at any point in Earth's history, your odds of picking one that's already extinct would be better than 99 out of 100. So if you knew nothing else about the species Homo sapiens, your safest bet would be that it's an extinct species. You'd lose that bet. <laughs> but for the vast, vast majority of species throughout life's history, extinction is something all too real. As a paleontologist, I can tell you that extinction is one of the most important elements of life's history. But as a philosopher, I have to ask, what is extinction? There's a standard answer to that question, but that standard answer can be kind of misleading, and we need to change that, because extinction is more than just an academic problem. At this very moment, as the continent of Australia burns, we stand to lose hundreds of species within the next few weeks, and it's not going to end there. By the end of this century, something between 30 and 50 percent of all species alive on this planet right now will go extinct. When that happens, there will be no announcement, no signal. They'll just be gone. And we won't know until it's already too late to do anything about it. Something like that happened to this fellow over here. This is a skull from the extinct species Thylacinus kinocephalus, popularly known as the thylacine, or the Tasmanian tiger. That tiger you caught by the toe in the nursery rhyme, this is it right here. According to one legend, pinching a Tasmanian tiger by a toe on its hind limb would render the animal utterly helpless and fit for capture. So it's no wonder you're extinct. <laughs> and we all did a great job catching them by their toes. Such a good job, in fact, that we caught them down to the very last one. Benjamin, the last Tasmanian tiger, who lived in Tasmania's Hobart Zoo for about three years until September 7, 1936 when zookeepers forgot to bring Benjamin indoors for the night, and temperatures plummeted below zero. By morning, Benjamin was dead from hypothermia. Species Thylacinus kinocephalus was extinct from a combination of overhunting, habitat loss, and simple human negligence. We all bear a collective guilt for the extinction of the Tasmanian tiger. I know, because I feel that guilt, and this all happened a good 45 years before I was even born. But guilt can be a great motivator. And for the last couple of decades, some scientists have been motivated to try to bring the Tasmanian tiger back. You may have heard of similar efforts to try to resurrect the woolly mammoth, or you've probably seen Jurassic Park, so you might have some idea of how this would work. <laughs> we can extract genetic material from a dead Tasmanian tiger and use that genetic material to construct a clone, thereby giving life to an organism that's genetically identical with a member of the extinct species. And we have plenty of sources of Tasmanian tiger DNA. We have pelts, taxidermized specimens, we even have a few preserved fetuses. So there's no problem there. When can we expect the species to make its comeback? Unfortunately, we probably shouldn't expect it at all. And this is where that standard definition of extinction comes into play. We normally understand extinction through the metaphor of death. Extinction is what happens when a species dies. When an organism dies, we only have a very narrow window 
for bringing it back, something on the order of a few seconds or minutes at the very most. And when that window closes, there's no resurrecting the dead. So even if we did clone an organism that's genetically identical with the Tasmanian tiger, there's good reason to think that, that, that the window for resurrecting the species Thylacinus kinocephalus is already closed. And the reason to think so is that no species exists in a vacuum. Each is a piece in a jigsaw puzzle that connects together with other pieces to form an ecosystem. In a jigsaw puzzle, each piece gets its shape from the pieces that surround it. And similarly, in an ecosystem, each species is shaped at least in part by surrounding ecological factors, factors like habitat, or diet, or predation. To be a Tasmanian tiger, then, is to be an organism in a species that fits in a very specific space in a very specific ecological puzzle. And if we remove the species from that space, then the other pieces of the puzzle rapidly rearrange and reshape themselves to fill the void. Research on the wolves of Yellowstone suggests that this process can take as little as just a couple of years. So even if we did get that cloned Tasmanian tiger, that tiger wouldn't have any space to fit into any of Earth's current ecological puzzles. Heck, the species first evolved on mainland Australia. Its original habitat is literally up in smoke at this point. The clone would have to make a new space for itself, and that would make it a new species. But this also gives us a new occasion to re-examine our understanding of extinction. Maybe death isn't the right metaphor. After all, a piece of a puzzle that doesn't fit in isn't lost entirely, it's just kind of stranded. We can access a better metaphor for understanding this if we turn within ourselves and examine our own minds. Because the mind is an ecosystem of information. Your ideas and memories are pieces in another kind of jigsaw puzzle that your brain has constructed to assist with the process of recollection. This is especially true of long-term memory. In order to recall information that you first stored away years or even decades ago, your brain had to puzzle together a tightly interconnected mosaic of information. And as you accumulate more memories, this mosaic grows and the puzzle becomes increasingly complex as pieces shift around and others change their shape in order for the brain to accommodate the newest information. Sometimes in the course of this process, a piece that formerly fit in gets left out, and this is what causes loss of memory. But it turns out that the information that you forget isn't actually gone from your brain, it's just kind of stranded unless your brain can reshape it to fit into its newest puzzle. I'll give you an example. This picture was taken in January 2013, when I visited Ireland's National Museum of Natural History. Before I started working on this presentation, I, I had actually totally forgotten that I once saw one of those taxidermized Tasmanian tigers, and there is clearly a significant chunk of my mind that is devoted just to information about that species. So you might wonder how I could have forgotten that that happened. Here's what I think happened. My memory of that museum visit initially got puzzled together with my memory of other events from the same day, which included among them a breakup with the woman who took that picture. <laughs> Don't feel bad. I now remember that breakup as part of a sequence of events that led me to meet my wife. She thanks you. I beat the odds in a number of different ways. And as I've accumulated more and more memories of my time with my wife, my mosaic of memory has grown, and the puzzle has become increasingly complex 
with relatively fewer and fewer spaces to connect a memory about a Tasmanian tiger. And so, that memory got stranded. But then I started thinking about Tasmanian tigers a lot again. <laughs> and my brain made a new connection with other Tasmanian tiger-centric memories that I hold, such as my defense of my doctoral thesis. But I can recognize how my brain has actually changed that original memory, because it now really feels like those two events happened one day after the other, but I know for a fact they're actually separated by more than eight months. So we can see how memories getting lost are kind of like species getting removed from an ecosystem. And we can also see how memories getting puzzled together in your mind are kind of like species getting puzzled together in an ecosystem. That's why I propose that we should reconceive extinction, not as a kind of death, but as a form of memory loss. Extinction is what happens when an ecosystem forgets about a species. And this should give us some cause for hope. In the midst of this current ecological crisis, where we stand to lose half of the species on this planet right now, we can't resurrect the dead, but we can recall lost memories. Maybe we can remind nature about the species that it forgets. There's a price to be paid, though, because no memory is a faithful reproduction of the original. The act of recollection changes it. And so, constructing new organisms that look and sound and feel like they're parts of extinct species is more useful for changing the future than it is for reconstructing a lost past. So if we want to preserve the world that we've inherited, then we need to act right now. We need to support conservation efforts. We need to protect habitats. We need to support scientific research and listen to what the scientists tell us. We human beings have beaten extinction's overwhelming odds so far, but other species need our help to do the same. Whatever it is that we don't stop nature from forgetting right now will live on only in our memory. <laughs>